one of the key things the prime minister then told us was that see that this spirit of entrepreneurship spreads down below at the grassroots level what are some of the things that you like to tell entrepreneurs in the room today we become the third best uh, startup ecosystem but our aim has to be that we should be the world's number one what we should prepare for is really the talent uh, the talent will really lead to investments and investments will lead to growth my first question which i want to ask you is uh, you know we had a fantastic g20 and each one of us as indians felt very proud you the sherpa uh, and we had the countries from across the world come mm -hmm. and we showed brand india in a very very powerful way what are some of the things that you like to tell entrepreneurs in the room today when it comes to taking indian brand our businesses what we are doing globally so shraddha first of all uh, you know normally when g20 is held it's held in uh, one capital or two cities maximum but in case of india we did it in over 60 cities of india and we tried to improve uh, the infrastructure in these cities the drainage the sewage the solid waste uh, so that you know uh, brand is about uh, how it is Uh, reflected in reality you can't have a brand entity with a bad product you have to create a top class product so the product improvement was very critical uh, secondly uh, you know uh, no country no g20 country anywhere else in the world had done it to the size and scale to what india did and uh, secondly i think the most critical issue was that india was able to bring uh you know uh, g7 all emerging markets uh, uh russia china all together on all key developmental issues so from sustainable development goals to growth agenda to reform of the multilateral institutions to women led development to uh, using technology to leapfrog uh the digital public infrastructure all these issues we brought everybody together so we played the key role of a consensus maker on all critical issues and that really established india's key role as uh, uh, you know uh, a vishwamitra in many ways sir the other thing i want everyone to know in the room is and i'm sure people know it but i'm just saying it that in 2016 we launched startup india and you are the man behind it and i remember in october of 2015 or october november of 2015 uh, we had a privilege of working with you and how quickly you thought about startups and in a month or two executed and we had a startup india uh, launch in 2016 tell us from your lens today in 2024 what have we achieved how far we've gone and what more should we do so shraddha you know when we launched the startup india the prime minister's vision was that we should be able to bring a lot of energy and dynamism in our startup movement by involving uh, you know making young people as young entrepreneurs and when we started the startup india movement there were just about 300 startups in india today we have close to about over a uh, you know 140000 startups we have over 140 unicorns uh, so you know we've come a long way since then we've be also been able to attract a lot of capital uh, we've done path breaking work by opening up a space sector geospatial sector the drone sector uh you know we created a fund of funds but one of the key things the prime minister then told us was that uh you know uh, see that uh, this spirit of entrepreneurship spreads down below at the grassroots level so we we opened up over 15000 uh, atal incubation centers in schools uh so that you know young children can get the spirit of uh, innovation at the school level so we uh, ai uh, you know computing all that power is learned from the school level onwards then we brought in a number of incubation centers together across india uh, a lot of them together and uh, we i think over the years we built up a lot of enterprise a lot of young entrepreneurship and every state has competed to drive the startup india movement in many ways uh, but i 
to to really become we become the third best uh, startup ecosystem but our aim has to be that we should be the world's number one and for being the world's number one i think uh, several things need to be done one is that we need to drive uh, the deep tech movement and that would require us like we had created a fund of fund for startups we need to create a fund of funds for the deep tech uh, which will enable india to make a quantum jump in deep tech number 2 i think uh, we are getting in our startup movement 75% of the funds are still coming from abroad so we need indians to put money into the startup you know even i as a civil servant put my little little bit of savings in startups only so i think uh, many all of us indians should put money into our startup movement india's insurance uh, sector the pension funds should put out substantial amount of money into our startup movement after due diligence uh, and uh, the third third thing uh, to my mind uh, would be that uh, uh, we should uh, you know keep opening up more and more sectors as we go along like we've done in uh, space uh, drones uh, like we've done in geospatial and now how we are driving the semiconductor Uh, and the last point i want to make is that innovation is a function of r and d and therefore this 1 lakh crore which government has announced for r and d needs to make a specific allocation for the startup movement number 1 and number 2 is to see that all these uh, science and r and d centers which uh, you know keep working in isolation they should all work at the university and college level they should all be linked to the universities the the young students in universities and colleges their professors and uh, the entrepreneurs should all work to do huge disruption uh, across and that's how a great ecosystem of innovation is built up and uh, these to my mind are the future road map uh, for many of these areas sir are you going to be driving that no uh, well i drive uh, i'm driving g20 so i think uh, you need to put many ministries together but that is to to my mind really the key you know but uh, i was saying this because i have seen you very closely in the last 15 years and you do drive things so for us and for everyone here in the room for whatever the government says and the rhetorics that we hear i think i will of course not like go on to say tall things but the government has delivered and you as a bureaucrat have delivered you've made things happen you take actions and that is why i'm asking this question that when it comes today to driving the bigger agenda in the world of ai where we will need a lot of capital we will need people coming together we would need someone like you to drive it so what are you thinking in that direction so uh, you know i think uh, that's something which the prime minister will take a call on but i think there are several other people equipped to do this you need to bring uh, several ministries together you need to bring uh, science and technology meti telecom uh, a whole range of ministries together to drive this including uh, pharmaceutical because a lot of work will happen we need to really get into the next big league of innovation in pharmaceutical sectors and move into bio similars Uh, so these are we need to make a huge impact on learning outcomes we need to make a huge impact on health outcomes improve our nutritional standards all this will not happen uh, without the use of uh, artificial intelligence and we should really technologically leapfrog in the field of ai in many of these areas to make a difference you know the prime minister has repeatedly talked about ai for all and ai for all is really about making a disruption in areas Uh, which will make a impact on the lives of citizens of india and that is uh, hugely improving learning outcomes it can't be improved learning outcomes cannot be improved when a vast segment of your population of who have passed out of 10th is not able to do class 4th maths or is not able to do class 4th english or hindi or the even their mother tongue or uh, it will not be possible without the use of ai uh, and ai will enable us really to uh monitor every single student constantly evaluate and put that result out in public domain so every child every father every mother every teacher will be able to know where they stand 
and therefore the use of ai will be a very very powerful tool it will be a very foundational te fundamental technology across sectors to change lives of indians yes sir you know after this i'm having a conversation followed uh, by your conversation with vishal dupar from nvidia who's here and uh, the question i'm asking is that you know when it comes to investment in ai us and and i think countries across the world have done far more and they have far ahead do you think that we have some advantage structural advantage right now as a country when it comes to ai and do you also think that we are a little behind in terms of our investment in this space so you know these are very disruptionist uh, technologies uh, it's sometimes uh, better to be a uh, a second mover in many ways uh, you know i've seen this happening uh, that uh, uh, you know when advancement is made by one country you learn to benefit from the technological development because technological development is taking place every second every minute uh, and you are seeing uh, you're seeing even a a great startup like open ai and uh, uh, you know people are moving out they're doing their new uh, new uh, startups etc they're moving There's so much of disruption taking place in this field uh, you've seen uh, the rise of uh, Nvidia in such a big way, in such a dynamic manner that it's it's truly amazing what's happening. So my my view is that uh, what we should prepare for is really the talent. Uh, the talent will really lead to investments, and investments will lead to growth. So my belief always has been that we should focus focus on skills. We should focus on talent in a very big way, uh, because. that is what will drive investments we've seen this in the field of semiconductors now and we should reorient many of our engineering courses uh, across you know all our iits iims triple iits actually should reorient their courses and embed ai in a very big way machine learning quantum computing these must become the foundational courses right now they are really the key to india making a technological leap frogging in the coming years and in the coming decades but we have such a skilled manpower and that's the reason why you have seen today the rise of global uh, capability centers in india the global capacity centers you know uh, you have about 2000 of them uh, they are digital twins for the head offices simply because you have the skilled manpower in india today uh, the cost of that skilled manpower abroad will be 10x more than what it is in india so uh, india has really demonstrated its great ability and uh, we will add a number of more ai developers in the years to come india will be the number one ai developer uh, i have no doubt in my mind that in the next 3 uh, to 4 years uh, in the next 5 years for sure we'll overtake us as the number one ai developer in the world <laughs> so it's always uh, you know talking to you i always feel hum kisi se kam nahi matlab aage hain sabse aage and it's very very inspiring see, why i am why i am saying this is that uh, uh, there is a tectonic uh, shift taking place we must embrace technology we must embrace ai and that is why government has brought in the ai mission uh, we brought in a ai not merely an ai mission we brought in a Uh, mission for quantum computing the government has brought in the semiconductor mission uh, 76000 crores has been provided for it we brought in a green hydrogen mission so if you look at, across the government has really uh, pushed into newer areas of growth to make a breakthrough in many of these areas and you're seeing the huge shift towards semiconductor and similarly the ai mission and the quantum computing mission will make a major breakthrough in several of these areas yes and sir i the other question i have is when it comes to growth capital uh, last two years in the startup space we've not seen that kind of big checks being written by indians still and there was a lot of dependency on uh, tiger global and softbanks and all the pension funds canadian pension funds and all that those big names we are not seeing do you see that changing in india where indians will be writing or we will have those kind of funds of funds investing in growth capital so uh, uh, shada like i said i am a i am a believer like the government has created a 1000 crore fund of fund for the space sector in this budget actually india needs to create a 25000 crore fund for the deep tech sector a fund of funds which will do risk sharing with venture funds 
you know, the due diligence must be done by the venture funds. But risk sharing, because you require a lot of patient capital. You returns from patient capital will come after a long while in many of these areas. So you need a fund of funds to support the VCs and do the risk sharing with the VCs in this. And to my mind, the big ticket thing really will be a 25,000 crore deep tech fund for India. And secondly, uh, get all our pension funds and insurance funds to take a little bit of risk in our deep tech movement in India. That is very critical. India should not be dependent on just foreign capital. India has a lot of capital. You're seeing a huge boom in our stock market. People have moved away from just spend, putting money into banks. Instead of that, putting money into uh, real estate and putting money into uh, you know stock markets. So what people should really do is take a little bit more risk and put money in our young entrepreneurs and take a little bit more risk and, and they will end up creating great wealth for India in the, in the years to come. Each one of us, I think each one of us should put a little money into our startup movement. You know, sir, today you're not here, but I don't know if you can see, but this is a, a room full of thousands of young entrepreneurs and they have no, been- No, no, I can, I can see the very lively, very energetic and the very dynamic mood over there in Bangalore. Yes, and uh, and we've been seeing it for last two days, and I really wanted all of them to see you in person. But what would you like to tell entrepreneurs today who are building in 2024 uh, for with all the funding winters that we heard for last two years? Well, I can only say that you know this is uh, if you look around the world, uh, it, this is not merely uh, India's decade. This is India's century, and a lot of that is dependent on the young population of India. The average age in India is just 28. Uh, the average age across the world is all, they are all growing, they are all aging, they are all growing. And 30% uh, of the skilled manpower of the world will be provided by India in the next 15 years. So you people should not only disrupt India, you should disrupt the world. And uh, what the innovation that you will do, you will not do merely for the 1.4 billion people of India. You will be actually innovating for the next 5 billion people of the world who are moving from poverty to middle class. That's a huge market size for India. So what India must do is to make population scale impact. And no other country has the poss possibility to do population scale impact. The size and scale of India's population enables you to do that. So when we started going green, for instance, in many of these areas, everybody in the world said that you'll, you'll have to pay a premium for moving from fossil fuel to clean fuel. What India has demonstrated through LED bulbs and its procurement of electric buses is that its size and scale enables you to do things at a green discount rather than a green premium. And that, to my mind, is a big thing. Use the size and scale of India to not only create a demand in the domestic market of India, but also in the export market. That is very critical. So this is really India's century to my mind. Thank you so much, sir. This is a very good start in the morning. And last, I have to ask you a very personal question. I've known you for last 15 years. Why are you not aging? In a young population of 28 <laughs> average, how are you maintaining this? Like that, this kind of energy, this kind of drive. Well, Shraddha, uh, I I am aging, but I am too. I'm attempting my best to do anti-aging work by doing a lot of more exercises. So physical hard work is very critical. You have to do yoga. You have to do uh, you have to do 90 minutes of exercise every day in the morning. Yeah, th thank you so much, sir. It has been a great honor talking to you. And thank I can you. say great on pleasure. behalf of everyone that we are very proud that we have someone like you in our country. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thanks. Great pleasure.